Okay, so in this video we're going to investigate um, something called second derivatives. Um, so later on in specialists we'll have a look at how um, you can actually take the derivative of the derivative to understand sort of the behavior of graphs and, you know, look at, analyze what the gradient is actually doing. So a second derivative is when an expression has been derived twice. So the way you would you would show this is um, f double dash x or d squared y over dx squared. So both of these are second derivatives. Okay, so let's have a look at how to do this problem. So this is just testing, you know, your overall differentiation skills. So let's have a look at the first one. We'll probably need more space. Um, the only pain of these kinds of questions is to actually simplify. Um, that's really the hardest bit. So here, let u equal to the content inside the logarithm bracket and y being equal to log e of u. So du over dx, we're using the chain rule once again, 4x minus 3 and here the y over du is equal to 1 over u. And so the first step is to find dy over du, which is just 4x minus 3 all over u, and u stands for this whole thing here. So, where? Okay, so yeah, we've got 2x squared minus 3x plus 1. So that's our dy over dx. Now, we have to, once again, go through this entire process to find d, d squared y over dx squared. And that's going to be by differentiating this entire expression here. So looking at this, we can see that we have a quotient rule there, where this is u and this is going to be v. And so... I'm going to try to squeeze it in here. So u equals to 4x minus 3, and v is equal to 2x squared minus 3x plus 1. And once again, I'm going to go du over dx. So 4 and dv over dx, which is equal to 4x minus 3. And so what we have to do is um, we have to use the quotient rule. So that's, um, we take v squared, we then put it up there, and we um, times it by du over dx, and then minus, we change it around to so u, and then dv over dx. That's the quotient rule that we're going to use in this situation. So we will have to put v in, 2x squared minus 3x plus 1. And we have to find what du over dx is, which is 4x minus 3 minus u. What did I do? Yep, okay. I just realized what I did. And that is that I haven't been putting in du over dx, I put in u. So we need to change that to a 4. That's actually times by 4. Minus u. So and then we are multiplying that by dv over dx, which is actually the same thing as u. So um, putting that expression in all over v squared. So, now the top part, we have to expand the 4 in. So, and this is going to be the most annoying process where we have to simplify everything. So, 8x squared minus 12x plus 4 minus uh, 16 x squared, um, we're just using, okay, so it's going to be negative 12 times by 2, so 
negative 24x plus 9 all over, um, I didn't square that, did I? Yes. So all over this. So now, what we are going to do here is just um, expand that negative in and collect like terms. So negative 8x squared um, minus 12x plus 4 plus 24x minus 9. I know I sort of I sort of first took the first two terms and I made it negative eight x squared and now I, I just changed the sign for the rest of them. Sorry, it's about it's a bit back to front, but um over this denominator, which I will not be expanding. Um and yeah, so we need to collect eight x we've already done that. We need to collect twelve and 24, so that's going to be negative 8x squared plus 12x, um, and then for take away, take away 9, which is minus 5, all over this. So I think that's it. I don't think that I'll be expanding that any further. Um, because you can probably do long division, but we're just not going to go there. So um, we'll just say that that's the double derivative. It depends on again the form that the you know special paper or what the question asks you to do. So generally that would be considered fine. Okay, let's have a look at this problem here that we have. So we have um, three cos x over five and cosec. And so we need to, um, I guess the first thing that we need to do really is to um, rewrite it in terms of what it actually stands for. So cosec, so cosec is um, the equivalent of sine, 1 over sine. So that's what we have. Um, now what I would do here is I would actually write it as 3. Um, sine x on 5 to the minus 1. Now, it's not an inverse, okay? It is a minus 1 on the bracket, on the external bracket. So please don't confuse it with an inverse. It's not the same thing. Um, now, what we're going to do is, um, I guess, we can use to differentiate the first time, dy over dx, we can just use the um, the chain rule. So um, I'm just gonna I'm I'm going to use the shortcut for the chain rule, um, which is essentially just going to be bringing down the power, so minus one, differentiating what's inside the bracket. Um, so when you derive sine, you actually get well. In this case, we're going to get a fifth cos of x over 5 and then we take the sine x on 5 and we decrease the power by 1 which will turn it to minus 2 and so dy over dx becomes a big messy expression which is uh, probably minus 3 cos of x on 5 all over 5 sine squared x on 5, like so. Okay, so that's our first derivative. Now, you need to derive it again because we want to find the double derivative. So, I'm not liking the look of this because it will be a quotient rule because you can see that we've got a fraction now. So u is going to be equal to um, negative 3 cos of 
x on 5 and v is the denominator squared and then we're going to find what the u over dx is which is um, when we differentiate that it becomes it becomes positive 3 over 5 sine of x on 5 and then dv over dx I'm just going to make that look like a v um, is equal to once again we just, we have a chain rule within one of these so I'm going to use the shortcut method when it comes to these um, sort of expressions here because you don't want to use a chain rule within another product rule that's just going to be very annoying so I'm just going to take the power down differentiate what's inside the bracket so um, a fifth a fifth cos x on 5 and then we have to decrease the power by 1 so sine of x on 5 Okay, so we've got that that part. We will be simplifying that definitely. It's not looking too nice. Um, so 5 times 2 is 10 divided by 5 is going to be 2 cos x on 5 and sine x on 5. And now what you can see is um, that that actually does simplify into the sine double angle formula. So it's sine of 2 times by x on 5. So remember with double angle formula when you have 2 in front and you have sine times by cos, you can take this this particular angle and just double it. Now let, let's have a look at how we put all of that together. So, so we have to use the quotient rule put it out here. dy over dx equals 2. We first have to square the denominator, which uh, is going to look really messy. So 5 sine squared x over 5 all squared. And then we take v, which is 5 sine squared x on 5 and times it by du over dx, um, 3 over 5 sine of x on 5. And then we say minus 3 over 5. We swap them around. Where is it? No. It's um, u times by dv over dx. Minus 3 cos of x on 5 all times by sine of 2x over 5. So, simplifying that, um, I think the best that we can do actually is just to try to expand everything and so we've got um, that 5 there and that 5 there is going to cancel and we're going to get 3 sine to the power 3 x over 5 plus 3 cos of x on 5 sine on 2x over 5 all over 25 sine to the power of 4 x on 5 and then I think what we can do is I'm going to go back to what this actually stood for because per potentially we could cancel out sine terms so I'm just going to 
Sorry to revisit that place. Okay, so plus three. If I expand that, that was two cos of x on five and then sine of x on five. So I'm going to write plus six because two times three is going to give us six. Six. Um, then we've got cos squared x over five times just sine x on five all over twenty-five uh, sine. So you can see that one of the signs can cancel. And um, we could also potentially expand this. So it's plus 6, 1 minus one minus is sine squared x on 5 all over 25 sine cubed x on 5 and um, yep I think I'm not sure whether that's it whether we can go any further we can probably expand that actually um, just by looking at this. So um, if we expand that and put a 6 in front, um, we can then gather together the two sine squared terms. So that actually becomes 6 minus 3 sine squared x on 5 all over 25 sine cubed x on 5. And I don't think that we can go any further with that. I I feel like that's going to be good enough. So we could then turn it into, we could take out a factor of 3 and just turn it into 2 take away sine squared x on 5 all over... 25 sine cubed but I don't think we can go any further than that at this stage um, yeah let's just leave it there okay so the next question uh, we have uh, this exponential here okay so we have once again we're going to most likely just replace um, right y equals to e to the u and make u equal to x sine of x. Okay, and so when we're differentiating dy over du equals to e to the u, stays the same. And there we've got the du over dx equals to x cos, I'm just using the product rule, plus um, so we just we derive the sine to get cos and then we derive the x to get one. So we get this. So now we can find dy over dx. So we multiply we're essentially using the um, the chain rule so we've got e to the u like so okay and we are replacing the u with what u stands for so x sine x So 
So that's our first derivative. The second derivative, d squared over du, d squared y over dx squared, is equal to, once again, we can break this into u and this into v, and try it again. So let's write those out here, u equals 2. Oh, it's, um, this time we have to consider the product rule. So the u is equal to e of x sine x, and v is equal to x cos x plus sine x. And the u over dx, I'm just going to derive it and put it at the front. So it's essentially getting the first answer that we got, which it was um, x cos x plus sine x e of x sine x, and then dv over dx becomes, so we're deriving that, so x minus sine x Um, plus 1 times by cos x plus cos. Okay, so I, this this part is using product rule and this part is just um, using the normal differentiation skills. Okay, so these two can most likely, yeah, they can add. Sorry about the mess. It's, it's a pretty long question, as you can see. So dv over dx is equal to negative x sine x plus 2 cos of x. Okay, so this is dv over dx, this is the u over dx. Now we have to just differentiate it and put it all put it all back. So um now where are we? So we've got u, which is this, times by v dash, which is dv over dx, this whole thing. Plus, I'm going to have to, I'm going to have to take more space up. So u dash, which is all of this. times by v. So hang on, let me just check this. u times by dv over dx. Yep, and now we go Oh, hang on. Yep, so u times dv over dx, which is up there, and then we take du over dx and times it by v. Ah, oh, so this is going to be quite a large expression. Okay, so yeah, so what I suggest is just to try to expand that as best as you can. Again, the problem is always expansion, so I would take out that e of x sine x, and you're left with. Um, No, you can't actually do that. So you're going to have to expand everything out and just find a way to simplify it, which is not going to be easy. It's going to be a long expression. So e of x sine x minus times by minus x sine x plus 2 times by e x sine x cos x, I'm going to get rid of this part of the expression, it's in the way, um, plus, and this is where it gets really bad, so we're going to expand that x squared cos squared x using FOIL. Um, plus x cos 
x sine x plus x cos x sine x e and then plus sine squared x e x yep so in terms of expanding that I mean that looks really terrible um just looking at whether there's anything like I can't actually find any like terms here um, but yeah, certainly this is not a question that you would be expected to double derive. It is a bit too long. As long as you know how to sort of how it works, the mechanisms of how it works, then that's already great. Um, they're not all going to be this difficult in, time, in terms of expansion. Um, I feel like I've done maybe some algebra, one of my differentiation derivatives may have been incorrect. Mm. I'm trying to find whether you can actually um, turn any of these cos squared plus sine squared into one, but that doesn't seem like there's a common common factor, common term that ties those in. So I think we'll just leave it like that for now. Um, but honestly, the that is quite an extensive um, double derivative. So you can see that the biggest problem is not necessarily the, the, derivi the deriving skills, it's actually the simplification. So we'll actually stop there with this video and then the next video we'll apply some of these second derivatives to looking at um, the how to sketch functions, etc. So this is just a skill that you you just need to practice and the simplification, you'll get better at recognizing um, all the different tricks uh, um, that are necessary to simplify. Um, but just keep on practicing and it's not too bad, it's just the same thing, just doing it again. Um, so hopefully that made sense and hopefully that last question didn't overwhelm you too much. So stay tuned for the next video. Thank you.